Musicians in bars getting beer. <laughs> what did we do? That, we just did it. Yeah? You're good. Whole he thing. Had it. Ozone Baby, Looney Tunes, Rock and Roll Over Kiss. Together again. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be third where's, time. It's the third time. Amazing. For you guys. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Your name confuses me with an old Chum FM DJ. John yeah, Major. Yeah, yeah, John yeah. Major. John Major, yeah. The spelling was different. He was a really nice guy. When I was a teenager, I worked at a restaurant just a block away from Chum. He was a really nice guy. Died young, though. Died young. Did he? Yeah. Steve Major. That's correct. And our old faithful. Well, yeah. Paul Stanley Taskus. We're talking CF goodbye five. Yes. September twenty eighth. V. You guys just come in and kill it, right? Yeah. And we love the event, and we love to be there. You know, supporting Paul, the cause. Yeah. yeah. And this year I get to debut. You yeah, well, hold on. Oh, I want sorry, to talk about on. Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this year I get to do double duty and show our new band, our Canadian tribute. So I'll be uh, doing a quick 50-minute set with Looney Tunes. Then I'm going to run downstairs and get my makeup and boots on. While <laughs> Steve's killing it. Yeah, pretty quick. While Steve and the boys are killing it. And then uh, we come up for the kiss. Yeah. Now, so Paul's yeah, double duty, and both bands are fantastic. I, I love the Looney Tunes. I saw I saw you guys. I think what was well, a year we ago. With you just, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Like what was that? Almost a year ago, right? Yeah, Rock Island. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. killer. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah. Great you brought a lot of people out. We killed it. We love that. <laughs> and this one's always full. We've never had less than four hundred. We've had up to five fifty. I'm hoping this year we get six hundred. And we uh, we've, we've made over forty thousand over the last four years. So. Right. It's pretty good for cystic fibrosis. Absolutely. Why do we do a cystic fibrosis goodbye? Well, because my daughter Tori is born with it. Uh, I think most people know that by now. And uh, she's still doing okay, but she's running into tougher as she gets older. Needs a liver transplant this year because of this disease. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, so, you know what? It's good to raise awareness and funds just to help find a cure down the road for this. Only 4,000 people in Canada have it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's uh, one of those ones that no one knows about until they look it up or until it affects you, right? Which I get. I never looked up anything until it affected me, right? Yeah. We urge you to Google it. Yes. It's, it's, you know, it's uh, entertainment. It's entertainment yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. There's some great raps out there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right? And we do them quick. Like, yeah. we, we got it down pat now, right? Rudy Blair does it in 20 minutes while we're setting up for the kiss. Right. It's all done. We get rid of 10 amazing prizes, all worth over 1000 and we raised like seven, eight grand just from the prizes, which are all donated, which is amazing. That's yeah, and and the time the show starts. What time does the show start? Seven thirty. It's nice and early, so you're not going to be there till three in the morning no, or two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's very corporate minded. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, family minded, really. Yes. You know, you know, you don't have to stay out all night. True. Yeah. Yes. So I I enjoy that part, and I think it's better for everybody. You know, that, yeah. uh, you know, you can get there just after dinner or be around here for dinner and then watch the show and then you're home at a decent time. You know? And this is where we are right now, by the way. Yeah, That's we're right. The, yeah. We're at the Opera House and just had a great uh, Greek salad. Classic, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So okay, let's, so let's find out more about Steve. That sounds good. Let me zoom in <laughs> on you, man. Yeah, so, so Ozone Baby, the third time we're doing it. Um, you know, uh, it's all Zeppelin, all the time. Gonna, you know, a nice little set list. 50 minutes, correct? Yeah. 50 minutes, yeah. Killer, all the best yeah, songs. Yeah, all the best songs. That's why I like it. Yeah, you know. None of that blues 12-minute jam. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We might surprise you and do no. a 40-minute version of something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of guitar you play this up on? Well, you know, it's it, it's pretty true. You know, Les Paul, standard, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are we doing it, guys? You know, the Marshalls and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so tell us much yeah. more about that. You do some Yeah, Ozone Baby, well. we've been together. It's it's 14 years now. 14 years with Ozone Baby. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're all good friends. We all love each other. Who's your singer? Um, not many people know of him, but he, he's... <laughs> relatively unknown. <laughs> yeah, relatively unknown. <laughs> No he's fixed he's new on the scene. <laughs> no fixed address. Yeah, he's new on the scene. Yeah, of course, it's, it's the wonderful Phil Nero. You know, and, um, you know, as usual, he's bringing it all the time. You know, and it's a same bunch of guys, Glenn Nash on drums. Killer drums. Yeah. 
Love it. Zola Apadula on uh, bass and keys. Love it. It's just a four-piece presentation of Led Zeppelin, like it, you know, it, it would be. be. Yeah, it's and, and should be, yeah. Sounds authentic. Yeah. You know, there's so many different ways to look at it. When you have bands like that, even even with Kiss, yes. there's so many different ways. Everybody has their own, um, and it depends what age category you are. Everybody has their own, um, you know, kind of idea of what what Led Zeppelin is or what you know what these classic rock bands are. The thing with Phil is that he's not really a Led Zeppelin mimicker. You have a lot of Led Zeppelin bands out there who, you know, the guy's not much of a singer, but he's a really good mimicker of, of Robert Plant. It's like all the old O's, O's, and the push, push, and all that stuff. But when it comes to hitting those high notes that Robert used to hit, you know, um, that that's why Phil was there, right? You know, you get the true, you get the true voice, you know. So um, I, I think that's the, you know, really big sell to it, you know. But then, you know what? There is a bone. I, I, I'm a big fan of the mimicker though too. I, mean, I love Phil. I like a good mimicker because I think it, it makes up for a lot of uh, talent sometimes. Mimicking's a talent. Play that to you doing Paul Stanley. I like to think I mimic him okay. I try my best, but like you know, it's funny. What he like he brought up a good point. Depends on the era too, right? I do better with the '70s era, Paul. That's why I stay away from the '80s because I know I can't do it as good. Oh, yeah, okay. So try to do your uh, strong points, right? Yeah, every, every fan of classic rock type of bands has their own image, of, you know, like the, the, their own sound in their head of what who they think that you know the band is. You know, a lot of younger Led Zeppelin fans, uh, you know, are are, are more. Um, you know, more influenced by like the later day and through the outdoor, like All of My Love and in the evening, like that. Whereas a lot of the older guys, they didn't, you know, kind of stopped so. after uh, the song made the same or something, right? You know, and they don't know that. And then the true, the, you know, a true Zeppelin fan is all about the bootlegs. It's all about the extended versions. That that's the real deep, you know, Zeppelin. Do you own a fan. bunch of those? I, that's that's what I'm all about. Really? Oh yeah. What's I your mean, favorite bootleg? It, it sounds. Um, you know, kind of pedestrian to a real Zeppelin fan, but you know, the big one when I was a kid was Destroyer, which is was like a four uh, four album vinyl set from uh, 1977, and those were the ones where I really heard all the opening up. You know, the half an hour of No Quarter, the you know, the, the 40 minutes of <laughs> you know guitar solo and. Uh, you know, the whole theremin and the long violin bow section and the whole thing. That wasn't part of the song Means the Same, which was 73. So I, I know it sounds pedestrian, but that was a real popular one. If you had Destroyer, and you know, for me as a, as a young teenager in, uh, you know, 1980, if you had the Destroyer bootleg, it was like, wow, this is, this is really special. Shows and stuff? Yeah, it was, it was harder to get here because, you know, the, by, 19, by 1980, the dollar was really sinking. And if you remember back when the dollar, even the 80s and most of the 90s, when the dollar was at 65, 63 cents, we didn't have a lot of that stuff. No one could afford to bring, uh, you know, we didn't have the selection. Like you went to the States in 1985 and it was like, look at all the stuff they have. Because yeah. nobody really, you know, because of the, the conversion rate, you didn't have it. So there was very few bootlegs that, that, at that time. And if they were around, they were really expensive. Now you can, you know, as the 90s went on and the dollar, uh, you know, and the world open up with the internet and all that stuff you can get all these bootlegs you can get any show you want of Led Zeppelin on YouTube and it's wonderful and I do it all the time yeah. and uh, you know those, those are things but I, un I understand that the average fan you know um, you know sticks to the studio albums and, and, and really when you break down Zeppelin um, you know it's all about Led Zeppelin 2 and 4 really oh, sure. you know those are the ones that uh, are the money right you know so we stick to that, and especially for a 50-minute set, there'll be lots of stuff from Led Zeppelin 2 and lots of stuff from uh, Led Zeppelin 4. Do you draw the bow? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sneak a little bow in. Yeah, we'll do a little yeah, bow, yeah, but uh, we, you, you, I don't think you're going to get the theremin. You know, you have to come out to a full show for that, guys. Since you've mentioned something that's little known by the masses, why don't you explain the theremin? It's just really just one, you know, one oscillator, and um, you're controlling the pitch. Uh, by the distance of your hand oh, yeah, or whatever yeah. to the antenna. That's keyboard that does that. That's, he's doing it on his keyboard. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, that and he right? wasn't, you know, Paige wasn't the, uh, the only one using it, but he was, you know, the he most prominent in rock, right? Sure. And, um, you know, Montrose used it a bunch of times, too, you know, Space Station Number 9. And, you know, um, I love it. 
I love it, but uh, you know, it, it has to come in small doses. It's not yeah. 1973 anymore, right, right. but I think you know, five or five minutes like of it is pretty good. Everybody goes, "Wow, that thing's amazing!" Yeah. Where, whereas, you know, if you went to some of those Zeppelin bootlegs, I would go on for 15, 20 minutes. Well, and you, you know, you got the rhythm section that supports you on it, so yeah, Bonham, and uh, yeah, Bonham you know, and Jones playing total. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Even though, even though we're, you know, we're, you know, for a fifty-minute uh, set, we, we stick closer to the studio stuff. There's always a little bit of interaction, and, and really, when it comes down to me as a Zeppelin fan, it's 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 about the communication that they had. So, you know, uh, th those those long jams were all about communication. And some people might argue that you know Plant wasn't really singing up to where he, where he needed to be or hitting those notes where he needed to be. And uh, you know they they all oh, the arrangements not the same and all that stuff, but but that was Zeppelin, man. You know they they were breaking that stuff open. Jamming. Yeah, you know they were breaking that stuff open, and it didn't work every single time. But for me, it does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm I'm a true fan from way back, and you know, and so so is the man. You know. Listen, if you want to give more letter, just feel free, man. Tell me more about your Zeppelin knowledge and where that comes from. Um, well, more? just to go a little further, everybody can find all that Zeppelin stuff. It's really easy on the YouTube and the bootlegs, and that, you know, now we mention that stuff. But the thing is, is that I never stop being a Jimmy Page fan or a Robert Plant fan or, or any of their fans, John Paul Jones, you know, you know, who should be mentioned, you know, a lot more than he actually is because serious talent um, that you know he gets overshadowed a lot of times by Plant and Page. But as the '80s went on, I, I never stopped being a Page fan. So you know, I was always into the firm. I, you know, um, if you really want to get down to Jimmy Page, the real album is, uh, the real two albums would be the Death Wish soundtrack and, um, you know, Jimmy Page Outrider. And now, they're very introspective. And they're not for a casual fan. But if you really want to know Jimmy Page tones and the, the dark inner secrets, you know, those are the albums to get. And, uh, you know, let's let's go even right to Coverdale Page. You know, one of my favorite albums from the 90s, right? You know, you know, so... It never really stopped. I, ne I never stopped being a fan, and uh, I, I know he has a lot of uh, unreleased material now that, you know, he's been tempted, he's been uh, teasing everybody, saying he's going to put something out, and maybe even tour, but it just doesn't look like that's going to happen, you know, unfortunately. If, if anybody knows, if you even go a little bit further into Crowley and you read any of those books, I, I mean, it's, there's, there's just as much, if not more, of uh, him mountain climbing and his travels, oh, okay. you know, than there is about anything uh, cruel and yeah. evil. To be honest with you, he was one of the he was one of the you know uh, top mountain climbers in the early 19th, you know 20th century. Is that right? Oh yeah, if all those books are available and all that stuff. But everybody, every nobody's interested in uh, Crowley's uh, mountain climbing. They're all interested in ooh, it's supernatural. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Tributing somebody is not just about their music. But but his original house, the Bolskin uh, house that Page bought and lived there, it's all it, had, it was uh, caught fire and it's all in ruins. Anybody can visit there now and walk through the ruins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have to say too, but not you know as as a as a young uh, young kid, I was just as much into Ze Kiss brought me to Zeppelin. And if you were ten year old male in 1976, Kiss was the greatest thing. On sure. Earth, you know that, and your evil can evil wind them That's up it. thing, right? Uh, you know, rock and suck and Yeah, robots. yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, Kiss brought me to Led Zeppelin. You know, I I, I knew a little bit. You know, I, I already had three and stuff like that. But you know, just the more listening to the Kiss, and it brought you, it brought me to Led Zeppelin, and then Zeppelin brought me to all kinds of other things. You know, and it closed. Paul's a big yeah. Zeppelin fan. Absolutely, Swear there's no him. doubt about it. Loves, you know, Gene, just, Gene was an investor in Gene. Didn't he have something to do with Van Halen as well? Gene, Gene uh, was at, at his uh, you know most giving because he had them under contract when uh, Warner Brothers yeah. eventually did sign oh, him, okay. and he let oh, him go. Yeah. Okay. He let him go. So there's more facts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, these days it's not hard to get most of these facts, but the, the thing right. is there's so many distorted facts. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And it's about, and it's yeah. about interest, too. Mm -hmm. Who's interested in this stuff? All the Steve Major fans. Yeah. <laughs> you know what blows my mind? I went to see Kiss Saturday, and I thought about it. It was whatever, August 17th, and yeah. I saw them. I was 11 years old in 1979. I saw Dynasty. I'm thinking 40 years later, I'm going to see these guys. I'm 51 now. I know. I know. And I can't believe, like, when you think about it, even my mom, who's 89, I, I ended up at the Birchmount putting on my makeup in her driveway because she lives around the corner. 
and she's staring at me, you know, little uh, Macedonian lady. Yeah. She's like, aren't these guys dead yet? <laughs> like, she's been watching me talk about kids since I was 11 years I old. I know, I know. And I'm telling her I'm still going to see them on Saturday. She can't believe it. And, and Keith Richards and Mick. Mick just survived the heart attack. Yeah, and and still great. comes to Toronto to do a show. Yeah, see, if Mick would have been a little bit more health conscious and followed a, a bit more, you know, Keith Richards, uh, you know, health, <laughs> healthy lifestyle, you know, see, it's all about Jack Daniels and tobacco. You know, that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps right? you going. Yeah. <laughs> what else keeps you going? Not just Zeppelin. You know, everybody in our in our age category is, you know, very similar. I mean, we're we're all very influenced by by the childhood, and and you know, we're all from the '70s, man. And and you know, I, most of us would all agree that that was the golden age of, of, of music and and even film for me, you know. And I, I realize we're all part of uh, you know that your childhood holds uh, special memories. And, and, um, you know, they might it be. Was a special time. I don't care what anyone says. I, I, I believe. And 80s. I believe. Special I believe time. it. You know, I believe it. I mean, you know, I, you just didn't have everything. wasn't so calculated back then. And it didn't things move yeah. so fast. That's like right. Now, the Absolutely. Way, you know, all our, the way we listen to music, everything's moving too fast. We went from you know a track to cassette to all, like gradually. At least it lasted for a while. Now it's ridiculous. Yeah. The next, anything you buy, you know, yeah, it's it's obsolete within six weeks, if you're lucky. I wanted you to turn a little bit away from Zeppelin and go to your other project. Yeah, you know, uh, the last year before we did the, I have the, the Foreigner tribute, the Jukebox Heroes. And uh, we did that uh, last year because I think Phil was unavailable. Oh, that's right. He did, yeah. did the Casilla yeah. last year. you know, and we had a lot of too. fun. And, uh, you know, we just got back from Ottawa. So and then we just Sorry. Jukebox Heroes. Jukebox Heroes. Yeah. Yeah, all this stuff can be accessed, you know, on Jay. Facebook with J Dog, J Dog the singer, yeah, and Tony Catroni on keyboards, and then there you go, we're right back to Ozone Baby with Glenn Nash on drums and, uh, and Soul Lapadula on um, bass, yeah, yeah, and uh, we do a lot of gigs. We just got back from Ottawa and, and uh, we just did the X, C and E, a lot of fun, and we're busy really uh, during the spring and the summer. But now we're gearing up for more Ozone Baby shows and. Uh, as we go, we're doing Port Dover with Ozone Baby. We're doing uh, Seneca Queen Theater in Niagara Falls in uh, October. And we're doing the Region Theater in uh, Oshawa in November. And all that stuff you can find on Facebook. And that's Ozone. Yeah, yeah that's Ozone, Ozone Baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what, what happened? How did you get to the second band going? Um, just thought it was time. Just thought it was time. We love Ozone Baby. Bill Nero is a busy guy, and so sometimes we just thought that it was a good idea to try. Um, with Jukebox Heroes, we do a lot of festivals and outdoor stuff, and it's a little bit more um, family oriented. You know, whereas Zeppelin might be a little heavy for some festivals, okay. um, the ballads of Foreigner and stuff right. and stuff like that. It, 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 it's, it comes down to it. You have some really great 70s and 80s hits that are unoffensive and pretty short and sweet. And especially and when you do the, we talked about this, when you do the shorter sets, it's yeah. just like knock out balls. Yeah, so yeah, it becomes the greatest hits album. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah a lot of people, you know, uh, Foreigner had that, I think it was 81 or, or the early 80s, they had that greatest hit album called uh, Records. Yes. You know, and it's like 40 minutes and it's all the hits. And then when you do the, you know, the short set, you just follow that and it's there it. you go, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. Very different guitar style. Um, yeah, but it's still rooted in. Look, anytime you get a Marshall, you get a Marshall going, and you, you run a Gibson Les Paul through it. Uh, I'm there. Well, that's I'm there. what I want to hear. Is that yeah. what the foreigner guitarist uses as well? I mean, right. you know, Les Paul to a Marshall is, is staple. You know, yeah. for me, for me, I know these days it doesn't. Really not, there's not a lot of guys who, who when you when you use a tube amplifier, you actually have. It's another instrument. You know. These days when you have everything pre-programmed and uh, whatever, a line six, or, or I don't care what it is, you know what I mean? It's all static, right? You know, you know my, 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 the, be, the, the greatest effect that I use the most is my volume knob on my guitar. You know? and, and, and that's what everybody, that's uh, that was the main effect in the 70s and the 60s for guitar players, right? So that is, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's like yeah. musicians at the opera house getting coffee and such. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us more about the recordings. Oh yeah, yeah. So the the, the biggest and most exciting uh, studio project right now is 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 working on the new Phil Nero album. 
tell us. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's been a while <laughs> since Phil's put out anything yeah. just under his name. Nothing but Phil Nero, okay. and uh, it's going to be spectacular, the great songs, and it's going to be pretty star-studded, too. Ah, a lot so of special guests, Phil. a lot of special guests, um, and we'll leave that as a surprise, and it should be out probably in November, and I think uh, it's going to be on uh, Carmen and Peace's record label. Ah. Yeah. So, you know, and we're allowed we're, to talk about this? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, if you're there. Well, we're going to leave the special guests oh, as a surprise. <laughs> Call Phil. Call Phil. He's busy. He's on stage somewhere. Yeah, right? he's exactly. He's on stage somewhere. He's busy. Gig somewhere. Yeah. Studio somewhere. Yeah, so that one, that's that's the most uh, exciting, uh, you know, Brilliant. studio project so that's going on. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Very exciting. Great songs, great songs. So, I've been working in the studio for decades as well. We're old guys. We've been doing all this stuff forever, and um, still yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> no. I wish the days of tape were back here, but nobody can afford that, and it's uh, it's too much work. Um, I wish that everybody could do. Four songs per role. Yeah, three songs. Home studio. Um, you know, I worked at one studio for for many uh, for a couple, at least twenty five years, but now I just pick and choose according. So I use many studios throughout Toronto, and uh, of course, man, all you need these days is a laptop for a lot of stuff. Right. So yeah, there's a bit of work that I do at home, but I use a variety of studios, and it's usually all still around the downtown area. But, uh, whoever's still in business. <laughs> and is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? Um, I just I just finished a, a, a great album with the singer from Buffalo. He's a legendary singer in Buffalo, uh, Jim Crean, and he's, it's a fantastic it's a fantastic album with a lot of great special guests: Vinnie Apice, Carmen Apice, cool. Stephen Hahn. Um, Tons of guys, from, like all from the 70s and 80s, uh, total special guest um, blowout. And, Phil's um, worked with him, right? Yeah, yeah. he's a, absolutely, that's how I know Jim, through Phil. All -stars. Yeah, yeah, Phil, Phil works with Carmine too. They, the Peace Brothers show up in a, in a lot of uh, cross-section uh, cross work of mine through Phil and through Jim. So that's just coming out, and Jim just did his uh, he just did his album release in uh, the Whiskey in L.A., and the album's all done, and he releases uh, going to be you know forthcoming very shortly. You know, he's released the videos, and that's all on Facebook and social media too. Um, and then you know, I do a cross section of everything, you know, from uh, R&B to to opera to you know whatever it takes really? to keep working. Oh yeah, yeah, I've done it all. So well, anything else that you want to you know plug? It's not easy these days. Even even your big name acts. Uh, I'm I'm using Jim Crean as a, in this uh, circumstance because he's got a lot of special guests and Vinny and, and Jim. But I mean, even even the, even decent bands that come out with their new material these days can't even get a like. You know, I, yeah. I, like that. You know, Kiss doesn't. Know. Kiss Kiss will tell you flat out why record another album. No one's gonna buy it. Nobody. Yeah. Like Nobody you know. Cares. So I mean, so then you you you, you transpose that to a new band transpose that to a new band it's even harder I mean if Kiss can't sell an album you know, 50 years ago people had you know conversations or 60 years ago where it's uh, you know television's dumbing down people right sure. instead of uh, having conversations and reading books and going to the library everybody had this right. conversation that you know and by 1970 it was a common conversation oh TV's ruining the youth you know TV's ruining the youth and as, as the decades go by now, you know, all of a sudden, then by the, the late 80s, you had 500 channels of television, right? And it's like, now it's even worse, you know? It's it's ruining the youth, and video games are ruining the youth, yeah. and all things. See, the thing, it's the unfortunate part is technology moving uh, moving uh, um, forward, where you have so much convenience, where you could do so much spectacular recording and professional recording on a little laptop now, whereas 30 years ago, I do stuff on a laptop now, re recording-wise and production-wise, that 25 years ago, I couldn't even dream of. I would have fainted. I would have said, "You're, you're. You there's no it? way I'll be able to do that." Yeah, thousands yeah, yeah, hours. yeah. I, yeah, you never left the studio 25 years ago. You never left the studio. You never went home, right? You know. But as technology moves forward, it has the unfortunate, um, you know, um, uh, it, it, uh, it, the society starts to dumb down. You have the internet. You can find if you really dig. You can get so many facts. You can get so many facts. But what most people are doing is, uh, you know, looking at cute kitten videos or porn. You know, Definitely if, if you find, you see, the, the ex, most of the exceptions in, 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 in film and TV and music, most of the exceptions is that somebody had the right, unfortunately, the right timing. And they said, you know what, I think five years from now, 
this will work and you slowly went off the course of where everybody else was going and you found your niche yeah. right. and, and it's the same thing with movies and television and all that stuff it's you're just slightly different but you have enough you know interest to the masses right it's wonderful when it happens right but uh, you know most mo most musicians if you're if you're earning a living or almost learning a living you tend to stay conservative yes, and say that yes. let's please hold, hold on, on please hold, hold on, on you know? uh, okay. it's true yeah. it's taking a bit of a gamble which a lot of people don't want to do yeah but if you're young enough if you're young enough you can do those and that's why you know this industry you know like you know it's always been about the youth right basically in the music right. industry these days, it, damn! If you're, you're you're 19, you're almost over the hill. Like you know, if you if you're a fresh pop artist, right? Yeah. So then, what happens to us when we age? Do we have to mentor people? How, do we have to be, uh, you know, a studio well, it, expert? Yeah, and be a it's it's it, uh, it's what's going to happen? Well, with the, us? the problem is, is that the problem is, is that you know, your the qualities that you have, like you know. Um, qualities and the depth of uh, you know knowledge that you have from a previous decade or previous decades they don't always apply to the new past at our age no matter what business you're in you have about a certain amount of jaded feelings yes you know what I mean yeah. and, and I'm not gonna say I don't but I, I work with enough um, you know young artists um, where I understand that they're pumped, they're pumped. and, and they, they they believe that this is the best time ever for music Isn't that wild? you know what I mean Isn't and it's wild? like we all know what's not, <laughs> but it's like I I, I I respect the fact that they they're positive like that. Hey, if you're a and millionaire, you're like a that. millionaire, and yeah. if you're not, you're not. That's I mean, right. I don't regret not being musically a millionaire. You know, I just want to do my music. Okay, I got another question for you, which I ask pretty much everybody. Um, it can be road related. Tell us a funny story. Okay, I, I like this one. Years ago, I was uh, this is probably 20 years ago. Uh, I was in a band. Uh, we were touring out west and we were there for several days and uh, the guy who ran the band the lead singer he had a really bad back problem and his back went out and so he was out, basically out of commission until we could get up, up on the stage and um, at that point um, you know things so th things weren't going well on this tour um, just because someone was basically down and in a lot of pain so um, I remember after the first set at the, in the, somewhere in BC, we walked outside in the parking lot to have a smoke, and we looked at the van, the rental van, and the t entire bumper was smashed in. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right, and we were like, "Oh man, we can't, we can't tell him he's he's dying of pain." It's like we can't say, Let, "Don't say anything." So, so we didn't say anything, and we took the van. You know, we drove the van back to the hotel. We got everybody back there, and then we valet parked the van at the hotel. Right? So then all night we were thinking, "Oh man, when when he sees that, he's going to freak. <laughs> he is going to freak." And um, next morning we get the call for the valet to bring the van out. Guess what? The bumper's fixed. Huh? The bumper's fixed. Yeah, they must, the valet must have thought that they hit it or smashed it oh while they were parked, right? And I guess these guys knew what they were doing because it was just a bumper. The deck was bad. It was quite bad. And I don't know how they fixed it, whether it was with a plunger yeah. or whatever the case. And it came on and we we're all like, oh my God, this, this is great. This fantastic. is fantastic. And we didn't even have to think about that. So that, that's a, well, one story that's, you know, ready for prime time. I, you know, when, once, once you get uh, going on those road stories, uh, most of them aren't ready for prime time. Wow, great stories. Musicians yeah. in bars getting beer. Steve Major, Paul Tanskis. Thank you, Billy. Kiss CF Thank you. Goodbye, number five at the Opera House. www.kisscfgoodbye.com for tickets. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Thanks.